existence is oneness nanak's way when nanak emerged from the river bain for three days he disappeared no one knows what happened to him it always happens so whenever one begins inward search one becomes useless for the outer world because your ways and means become different people become oblivious of your presence because when you are meditating you are inward you are quiet your presence will not be felt by the people so this is a story and the story is very relevant whenever we have to say something very important we cannot say just in the straight into the words so when he emerged from the river he said ek onkar satnam and then whatsoever he said afterwards is the explanation of what he said in the first place this in sikh religion is or according to japji is known as mool mantra the basic it has two parts first is ek onkar satnam which is invocation this is the essence an entire sikh religion is condensed in these three words after this all that nanak spoke is explanation not everyone is at the same plane as nanak is as if that has been the case then there is no need for nanak the explanation is therefore needed and it is the methodology or tariqat or the way of nanak to bring transformation in you these are the words of the one who has known when a master uses certain words there is certainly a difference in fact it is the master who gives his fragrance to these words each word that nanak has used echoes his fragrance and his being nanak experienced his beloved and out of that experience these words overflow before i go into i had already explained to you how it happened how nanak but there is a, another story the first experience that nanak had of satori we can call or a small window that happened when he was 16 years of age 16 years of age one night mother tripta got up it was the third quarter of the night Ev- the whole village was asleep everyone was home was asleep but the light was flickering from the room of nanak the mother got worried she knocked at the door son what are you doing same time why are you waking up is time to go to sleep same time a bird echoed the sound pihu 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 is the word used in poetry and shayari in mystical language as the word for beloved nanak drew the attention of his mother towards this sound and said mother are you listening to the sound of this bird this bird is not asleep as yet its song the clarion call continues the bird continued the lament of separation from its beloved i am in competition with this bird it is calling to its beloved the bird is not silent it is calling to its beloved then how can i be silent the bird continued the lament of separation with its beloved i am in competition with this bird it is calling to its beloved then how can i be silent i will continue to sing as long as the bird continues to call its beloved is close by but my beloved is far even if i continue for lives only then i can reach in love one does not count days 
and night and time becomes irrelevant when it comes to love and thus Nanak continued singing Nanak reached Nanak reached to the ultimate through singing Nanak's path is full of songs his search is unique remember Nanak did no yoga no tap no dhyan nothing Nanak simply sang and he sang with so much totality that the song became his meditation the song became yoga whatsoever one does with totality that alone becomes the path whatsoever you do with totality with total energy with oneness that alone becomes the path it is not important you read this, you sing or you do anything else. Nana continued to sing the rest of his life. Such songs are not the songs of an ordinary singer. These are the songs of the one who has known truth. These songs echo the ultimate experience of truth and oneness. These songs reflect the very being of God or Rab as Nana calls him. Having drunk, Nanak is now overflowing that which cannot be put into the words. And that time, Nanak was 16 years of age. Remember, a 16 years of age boy have that kind of awareness. And when Japji was born, the incident of the river Nanak was 35 years six months and 15 days so the nanak search is unique and when he emerged from the river the first words that he spoke that ek omkar satnam and that incident or the story of drown disappearing in the river is simply a story it is a symbol and you have to understand the symbols and whether you disappear in the river or the mountain or anywhere else what is very important the ego or the vanity must disappear with ego and vanity how can you be in front of him also how can you be in such a presence that is not an ordinary presence you cannot look towards the sun attentively the glare blinds you then how can you in be in front of the one which is thousands times more glowing than sun the day your vision opens you realize that the energy field surrounds you only you disappear that is all this cannot happen as long as ego exists ego is like the speck of dust in your eye with that speck you cannot open your eyes and with closed eyes you cannot envision do not consider me literally by opening the eyes I mean the disappearance of the speck of ego in your eyes the moment the speck is removed the unknown and unknowable becomes visible to you God is always there was never a time when he was not and there will never be a time when he will not be this is true of you as well only you were not available Nanak disappeared God appeared now God manifested through his very being and his presence Remember, there is nothing except God. But God only appears through His creation and godliness. This is more sublime than God itself. Nanak returned as godly. The man in him died. And now God is born in him. After this happening, whatsoever Nanak said is precious. Every syllable is precious than the costliest gem. For each word or syllable, even the entire wealth is meaningless. The words that he spoke, Ekonkar Satnam.
the entire message is complete. Ek means one, Omkar means that existential sound that is continuously happening. No one is creating, yet still it is happening. And that alone is truth. That alone is Hak. And then, what are the attributes of it? Karta Puruk. Karta means doer. Puruk means the only, if there is an act, then someone has to be to do that act. Puruk means man, male. Karta Puruk, the only doer. Nirbhav, fearless. Nirbhav, without any prejudice. Akal Murat, beyond time and space. Ajuni Sabang, born out of its own free will. No one has created that. And Guru Parsad, how do you attain to this state by the grace of the Master? He is one. His very form is Omkar, the existential. He is Satnam, embodiment of truth. Truth incarnate, the cosmic doer, beyond fear, beyond prejudice, beyond time and space is his sublime existence. Born out of his own free will, he ever remains unborn, yet still he is the cause of his own existence. Such are the attributes sacred and sublime. Now, how can one attain to this presence? Certainly not by your own efforts alone, be assured. By the grace of the Master, let this be your trust and certitude as well. All that we see around is many. Whether, whatever you see, wherever you go, there is a division. All around only duality and multiplicity exist. You go to the seashore, only waves are visible. Ocean is one and waves are on the surface, yet still you do not see the ocean. You can see all that is on the surface. This is the only vision that you have. You do not see beyond the duality. To see beyond the duality, you need a different eye. To see beyond all human beings, to see oneness in them, to see your own image in them, to see the image of God in, in you and in all around you needs a different kind of vision. To see beyond the outer you need a different eye. As is your vision, so will be the scene. Whatever is inside you will reflect when you come in contact with the other. We see things as we are, not as they are. So whenever you have any ill feeling coming against someone, always go deep within and see. You will find traces within you. As is your vision, so will be the scene. Whatever shade you have on your eyes will certainly give you the hue. Your awareness can never be deeper than your understanding. This is the reason there are altered states of awareness and Sufis call these as various stages of nafs. And when you have outer eye, then you can only see the waves and then you will claim that you had seen the ocean. Use your intelligence to find the answer yourself. This is not the way to go to the ocean. From the shore only waves are visible. To know the ocean, you have to be in the ocean. This is the reason Nanak drowned in the river. He is not lost in the waves. Instead, Nanak is deep within the river. Mystically, river symbolizes the being of an aspirant. And from the surface, whatsoever you will say will be false. So when it is said Nanak drowned in the river, means he drowned in his own being you can say that you have been to the ocean. A wave is not ocean. And neither the sum total of waves is ocean. There is a fundamental difference between the ocean and the wave. Wave is short-lived. 
a moment before it was not next moment it appears and then following moment it is no more again it is transitory such cannot be the taste of god can it be certainly not once there was a mystic a sufi master his name was junnat he loved his son dearly suddenly one day the son died in an accident junnat cremated the son this baffled his wife wife always thought that junnat could never bear the agony of separation with his son it appeared as if nothing had happened to junnat it appeared son has not yet died Junnath remained unaffected by evening everyone left expressing their condolences an amazed wife inquired if he did not feel the agony you loved your son so dearly that i thought you may break down once he is not there husband's response is significant it reflects the understanding of a master one who has known how to be for a moment i was taken aback by the sudden demise the same time i remembered something there was a time when sun was not and i was happy and then the sun came happiness remained now that sun is no more than why lament happiness is there still you think happiness increases or decreases happiness is not quantitative happiness is the quality of your being in that state it is bliss always remember happiness is not qualitative we think happiness is qualitative is it really qualitative no uh, it is is it qualitative no happiness is this there is still you think happiness increases or decreases happiness is not quantitative it is the quality of your being in in that state it becomes bliss happiness is an inner functioning it has nothing to do with the outer i am blissful because of a different reason when the sun was not yet i was not unhappy then how, how can i be unhappy when sun is no more between these two happenings was a dream children are born through you not from you you are the door you are the mechanism that a child is conceived a child is the gift from the unknown give your love mind they will have their own once you have given them your love certainly something will evolve from within that which comes and disappears is dream that which attains form and dissolves is dream waves are dreams waves are dream like waves are numerous ocean is one we can only see many as long as we will not see oneness wandering will continue misery and despondency too will continue truth is solitary nanak sings ek omkar satnam karta purukh nirbhav nirbhair akal murat ajuni sambhang gur prasad nanak says that which is cannot be given any name all names are given by man Omkar the existential sound is the only name that is not given by anyone it is the existence it is it represents the presence that there is something ram krishna allah are all the names given by men of different sects the only name that is not given is that existential sound and why this name omkar remember man is a constant noise within a chatterbox thoughts keeps on floating on the inner sky waves keep on appearing on the surface when thoughts are no more waves are no more 
you drown in your innerness, only then you can hear a mystical sound. This sound is uncreated. No one has created this sound. This is the echo of the existence. So this existential sound that Nanak calls as his rub is Omkar, the way of existence. This name is not assigned by anyone. Deep within he experienced when everything becomes silent, a constant music plays on, the music of silence. And that music is the essence that we call God. Everything that exists in the form of a sound is the outcome of friction. Musician vibrates the strings of the musical instrument. A song is created. A sound comes. That sound is the outcome of the friction. Water falls on the rocks. A sound is created. Breeze flows rustling through the trees. A sound is created. All these are the outcome of friction. And that is not what Nanak means that which is and he says Omkar it is an unheard sound uncreated sound there are two kinds of sound Had and Anhad Had means boundary and Anhad means that which is beyond and Nad means sound Had sound and Anhad sound the journey is from the known to the unknown. You are in the realm of the known. You have to go beyond the known to enter into the realm of the unknown. And this is not a created sound. And this sound comes into existence. You realize, you feel only when all the noise, the chatter, the clatter of the mind disappears. Then you hear a sound. This is the sound of silence. Suddenly something dawns. A realization happens. Awareness comes. You understand this sound is not created by any friction. Uncreated this sound is always existing. This is Anhat Nath. The sound that exists when all noise disappears. Whatever you call as sound, music is a noise. And there is the sound of silence, the music of silence. Nanak says this is Omkar. This is the only authentic name that which is. And Nanak calls this as Nam. And again and again he uses the word Nam. Each time Nanak uses the word Nam that he refers to this uncreated existential sound, the Anhat Nat. Then he comes, when you try to understand this, then you will realize whatsoever you say, whatsoever you speak, and if you try to listen to it carefully, you will find that everything dissolves into an unknown, uncreated sound. All the drops of the water disappear, drown, vanish, dissolves in the ocean. Everything, every sound dissolves into this existential sound. You can use the music as the way. You can watch, sit down by the river when it is merging into the ocean. Drop by drop, it is merging into the ocean and becoming ocean. Drop by drop, you can see all the thoughts disappearing into the unknown. And when all thoughts disappear, there remains a oneness. Meditation is that technique through which all that is dissolves into its totality. The thoughts, the emotions, the feelings that dissolve. And 
as this the silence descends you come to hear this uncreated sound as thoughts vanish you come to experience something which is beyond thoughts beyond emotions omkar omkar is always only you need to attain to silence and it is one the ocean is one there are not too many oceans but because of the identification we identify these by different names oceans are one waves are many and that the nature is that it is always there and that alone is true i had explained the three aspects of it the sound has three syllables a u and m this is very similar to that in the science terms the electron proton and neutron yesterday's talk i had explained the essence of it the effort of life the spiritual search is to find that existential sound within us now the explanation of the words satnam remains and after that comes the explanation of the other words the attributes ek omkar satnam sat means truth nam means name the explanation of this sound 